Okay, welcome back in. It's Bronco and the Pig. As always, I'm here with my co-host Delaney, uh, the Bronco, and I am the Pig, Cooper. And we are officially halfway into May, and it is May 17th. Uh, Baseball is cruising along. We are uh, approaching our second month in, and then the other big stories are obviously basketball and hockey. Uh, the playoffs the playoffs are well into the second round, almost into the third round as we speak. There's so many games going on, so much sports. Uh, both have, There's some college sports that we're going to touch on today, um, some major news stories as always, and then um, some, some cool uh, headlines that, that we found, not just about the three major sports that are going on. Uh, but we do need to start, and we always start with our weekly stories. We have five of them for you. Um, and the top one has to be uh, Mr. Harrison Bucker, the kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Bronco, <laughs> we're going to set some ground rules here before we talk about this. Okay. The Bronco and the Pig is not a political po- – like, we don't talk about politics. We don't. No. We're not diving into that. We're not saying he's what he said is wrong or right. We're not going to go there. Delaney, did you watch or see the Harrison Bucker graduation speech? I have, and it has been all over my social media. I see it. That's all I see people talking about right now. So it's not... I it's see a avoid. lot of it. It's hard to yeah, avoid. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I agree. It is very hard to avoid. Um, like I said, we don't like to get political. He did say some stuff about women and uh, abortion and um, other political topics in this commencement speech that he gave. Gonna, I'm not going to dive too deep into it. Uh, if you want to know exactly what he said, go watch the speech. <laughs> I'm sure you can't miss it. Uh, but what I do want to talk about is, Delaney, in your in your opinion, where do athletes, where do they fall in to their role in the world? Uh, they how, how should they? How do you think they should be, you know, treated? Um, mm-hmm. opportunities given, things like that. Where where would you say athletes are? I do I do keep in mind that these are normal people, but I feel like once you're an athlete and like in that space and in the public, you are kind of held to a higher standard to be a role model. People should, when you make a mistake, people should recognize that you are human and everyone makes mistakes, but I think for, like, younger generations, a lot of these kids, like, look up to athletes and public figures as role models. So I think they need to keep that in mind. The key word they used has to be role model. And you, doesn't matter how good of a player or how big your platform is, or if you're Mike Trout or some minor league player, when little kids watch you, whether they're at a minor league game or a major league game or, you know, the pro level, hockey, basketball, football, um, even the college level and even into the high school level at some times, mm-hmm. little kids are going to, you know, look up to you. Prime example of that is you see these videos of little kids, you know, doing doing the home run trot where they flip the bat or um they they do a celebration when they score a touchdown that they see these major these professionals do you can see the direct impact on that it's a tough subject to talk about because you know everyone deserves to have their own beliefs their own you know uh what 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 they think is right and wrong uh, you you are on your own you can say whatever you want believe whatever you want but when you you have to recognize that you are a professional athlete and you're in the the public's view, you are this this figure that you know people look up to, people are are see everything and want to talk about you, regardless mm-hmm. of who you are. Harrison Bucker, his he's a kicker, okay? I mean, it's to not be like honest, Mahomes. I've never heard of him before this week. Like I have no idea who he was. So. Yeah. People are saying, oh, he's just the kicker, all this, that. 
but he's still in the public view and he's still that, exactly. you know, figure. Uh, so I think athletes kind of have to walk on eggshells a little bit when it comes to like what they say and what they do out in the public or, um, in view. Mm -hmm. So it's all about accountability. In my opinion, Harrison Bucker, he, he messed up. Uh, do you think the league should punish him? No, I think punish. No, but I do think like some people on the chiefs team maybe should, talk to him maybe yeah. they might think he owes some people an apology but i don't think like the nfl should give him a punishment at all because I... this is, is nothing to do with football per se like yes he's representing the chiefs or representing the nfl but he's allowed to say his opinions whether you agree with them or not i a thousand percent agree with you the the nfl probably won't and shouldn't do anything with regards to this. He was asked to deliver a commencement speech. He said some stuff that are controversial. People don't agree with it, but some mm -hmm. people do agree with it. It's it's the same as me saying, I love the Angels. The Angels are the best team. Some people agree with it. Some people disagree with it. They're clearly not the best team. I'm just <laughs> going to say that. But it, it, that's the point is – he can he can say whatever he wants. It's the beauty of this country. You can you know you have the freedom to say whatever you want. Sure, it made some people mad. So, don't watch the Chiefs or yeah. root against the Chiefs. Now exactly. it gives you an extra reason to root against the Chiefs. Everybody already <laughs> hates them anyway. Uh, so, I don't think there will be a punishment. He's already getting punished enough by being ridiculed online and and everybody yeah. hating him at this point. So that's kind of the where the Bronco and the Pig stands with that. We're not going to dive into what, like I said, we don't do politics. We don't, we don't dive into what's right and wrong or uh, what we believe on this. So mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything else to add real quick on Harrison Bucker, Delaney? I just think it's kind of a wake-up call for a lot of those athletes, maybe – some of their egos are getting a little big, so it's like a reminder of how they should mm -hmm. act. I think. Well, it's the same for, you know, LeBron, LeBron James has said some stuff in his career. Aaron Rodgers has said some stuff in his career. Some others, I'm sure, that I can't think of off the top of my head. But, you know, it, like you said, you got you to gotta come back. You're still a person. Just because you get paid millions of dollars to play a game doesn't mean that you are you, you're not accountable for your actions off the field. Uh, Harrison Bucker, I hate the Chiefs, so it is what it is. <laughs> uh, moving on to our second story, number uh, number two here. So this week started, and this is a really cool story for you and I, uh, on a different note than our first story. Uh, yeah. The men's lacrosse championships, the, the NCAA men's lacrosse championships, both men's and women's have uh, been playing this week. So th the reason I say it's a cool story for us is our cousin is the uh, a player on Towson University uh, for the men's lacrosse team. And they were playing on when, – when was that? Was that Monday or Tuesday? Monday? Yeah, Monday maybe? I can't remember. I want to say it was Monday when they played. Uh, unfortunately, they did lose to Syracuse, mm -hmm. um, who is number four in the country. But just to make it to the tournament was pretty cool. And yeah. to watch him play was really cool. One thing I want to talk about. So do you? how well do you know lacrosse, Delaney? I, I thought I knew the gist. But when I was watching Camden... Well, he played lacrosse, so he was explaining all the rules. So now I definitely have a better understanding. But if you don't, if you don't know what's going on, it it looks very, very confusing and very like hard to follow. Um, lacrosse is a very cool sport. I will say it's physical. It takes a ton of skill, um, mm -hmm. and it's very team oriented, in my opinion. Um, I think the coolest position has to be the goalie. He's yeah. got the mat, the massive net. That guy is yeah. insane to put his body in front of. Those those balls are hard and they're yeah, rubber. Yeah, too and Yeah, and they're fast. Uh, so that guy's those guys are crazy. Cross is interesting because 
you can only have a certain amount of people on each side of the field, which yeah. is which is a weird. I don't I don't know of any other sport that does that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I can't think of anything other than maybe football. But football has like mm-hmm. your whole team's on one side and the whole team's on the other side. Lacrosse, only a certain amount of players on your team can be on certain sections of the field, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, did you did you notice this being played? I, I, I feel like there's always people coming in and out, rotating. Well, one thing I learned that I thought was really cool, so Camden was explaining to me the difference between the lacrosse stick length. So the longer this, if you if you have a longer stick, that means you're on defense. If it's yeah. shorter, you're offense. So when you switch from offense to defense, the team might want a longer or shorter stick, if that makes sense. Yeah, so... And they, so the players are just running on and off the field to switch. Yeah, so so one thing that I noticed is I always thought that it's defense, midfield, offense. Like, that. those yeah. are the three distinct positions. It's complete... I'm completely wrong. You have, like, defenders that have short sticks, defenders that have long sticks. You have midfielders that have short sticks and long sticks. You have uh, face-off guys, you have speed guys, you have, like, there's so much, like, it is so strategic in the, the personnel that you put on this field. So our cousin, Josh, he is number 12 on Towson. He was a uh, mid- attacking midfielder is what they, yeah. they called him. So he plays in the midfield, he goes back and forth. I saw him on defense a couple times, but then he's more of a quickster, uh, so he goes on offense and and he can freaking rip it. it it's, yeah, it's he's so way, fast. He's like zooming by. Yeah, and the way, he can shoot, the way he can shoot is is pretty insane. Uh, luckily for us, we are in a we grew up in an area where lacrosse was pretty popular. Uh, yeah. in in Orange County, California, lacrosse is pretty popular for a West Coast. You go to the East Coast, it is. It is it's a whole like, different ball game. It's the it's the number one sport. Maryland, yeah. where our family's from, where they live, where they grow up. Lacrosse is it. Lacrosse is the thing. Um, one thing I really like is I remember our aunt from Maryland, Aunt Danielle. Um, she was telling us how California lacrosse teams, and no shame to California lacrosse teams, but they'll be the best one in the state, and they go to Maryland and they get their butts kicked. Yeah. Like it just it just shows how big it is over there. So it's really exciting that Josh got to do well, that. Well, well, we went to and I I knew this for a long time because we went to a high school in California that was constantly ranked in the top 5 in the state, mm-hmm. constantly in lacrosse. Lacrosse is huge at our high school. And yeah. they were good. They were really good in California, winning CIF consistently. They played tournaments on the east coast the carolinas maryland Mm -hmm. uh into uh new jersey area they like you said they get their asses kicked it it wasn't even like it's a whole different ball game whole Mm -hmm. different ball game going over there and playing lacrosse um but lacrosse super fun to watch go watch uh it's being it's being streamed on espn so go watch lacrosse if you haven't it is entertaining um it's fast paced and uh, it's relatively easy to like to pick up understanding wise. You mm-hmm. just got to kind of know who's on what team and which way they're going, and be able to follow the ball is a hard part. <laughs> That's the hardest part, honestly. Yeah. So uh, go watch the cross and shout out to our cousin Josh for an awesome senior season, and uh, they made it all the way to the NCAA championships game. So uh, pretty great accomplishment. Mm-hmm. But moving along to story number three. Uh, this happened yesterday, or sorry, Wednesday. Uh, the NFL schedule has been officially released to the public. Mm -hmm. So all this tells me is the NFL just runs America. America, (laughs) America runs on the NFL. Everybody cares about the NFL. Every sports fan in the country cares about the NFL. Now, we care about baseball. We like college basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have, you know, those are our sports. But the NFL is, like, (laughs) like, 
all they did was release the schedule. And the whole world mm-hmm. is blowing up. Like, oh, my God, they got these games and this game and all this stuff. Have you seen some of the videos? Have you seen some of the, you know, release uh, stuff by these teams? Yeah. Well, it kept coming up on my feed. Like, every team. I feel like I've watched them all. And I was... I got to give them props because some of these videos are hilarious and they're so creative. And so I didn't know they made these like type of videos, but now I'm looking forward to seeing them next year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is definitely the biggest schedule release I've seen. I know they've done videos in the past, like some teams, but every single team did something different, different something creative. Uh, my favorite, personally, has to be the Buffalo Bills video. I know I sent it to you. I don't know if you watched it, but it's Josh Allen. You know, uh, for whatever reason, he 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 lives in a construction site. I don't I don't really <laughs> understand it, but uh, it's it's funny. It's entertaining. It makes you it makes you laugh, and you know, it's it's just a cool way that the NFL is like incorporating fans, in my opinion. Yeah. It just gets so, people excited. Mm-hmm. When they see and it. so about the NFL, uh, the NFL schedule release, they released that there are going to be some games, um, international games. Now they they've done this for quite a few years now, but they're they're really branching out now. So this year there are there is one game in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. There's one game in Munich, Germany, and then there's three games in London. Uh, they've played in London in the past. They've even played in Germany in the past. But I believe this is the first one in Brazil. What do you think about international games? What do you think about them playing across the seas? Now think about the players, think about the coaches, and think about the fans. Well, personally, I think it's a really cool idea. I know if I was one of those teams that get to travel and play one of those games, I would be looking forward to it all year. Um, and I think it's just exciting for fans to like watch it. I'm curious if there will be a lot of fans in the stadium or if it will be like a lot of locals just going to like an American football game, you know? Well, when I, when you watch the games in London, when you watch the games in Munich, they, they've been very successful. Like a lot of people show up. I can't tell if they're Americans traveling there. Yeah. And go into the game, or if they're locals going to the game just because it's American football. It's the same with me. If if I'm in San Diego and a you know Manchester United, the English team comes and they're playing a German soccer team, I'm I I'd be down to go to the game. I'll yeah. go watch. Like it's it's something different. You know, it's cool. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? There's been rumors. Nothing significant, nothing serious about the NFL creating teams internationally and having them part of the league. Because there's I mean, been talks of creating a division of the NFL, so four teams, okay. but they're international. So there's like two teams in London, there's a team in Munich, there's a team in France. So what do you think about is, that? my question is, will these international teams come to the States to play? Or do the they international part, teams play the international teams? From what I've heard, they are part of the NFL. They are four new teams in the NFL, but they're located internationally. They play obviously they would play each other because they're all in yeah. the division. They're all in the same division, but then yeah. they would come over. I, I don't know. I, I that's one. It sounds because what I've heard, a lot of the players and the coaches, they like it because it's it's something different and the fans enjoy it. But the travel and the you know the accommodations that they have to make and yeah, it's it's pretty rough. I mean, I think it's a cool idea, and I think it will kind of expand the franchise even more, which I think obviously they want. I think what they should do is almost make like two different tournaments instead of just having four teams, make a whole nother tournament i don't know if this is making sense like bracket almost have them play a whole internationally second a whole second yeah. week. and then have them when it gets to the end that's when the state's team and the international teams intermix that's what i think they should do yeah i mean there's endless possibilities with it i think mm-hmm. the, the bigger challenge is travel 
yeah. uh, and just players in general. I mean, if you're adding four more teams, that's that's four more rosters of players that you got to find to play at the NFL level. But I'm um, curious if, like, like for these international teams, are there a lot of people internationally that want to play football, American football? I think it's as big uh, there. Yeah. If you look at the NBA, the NBA is being flooded with European basketball players. And, I mean, Nikola Jokic just won the MVP award three times now Mm -hmm. or twice or whatever it is. Uh, There's – there's with the NBA, there's a lot of international players coming over because there are – there's a Spanish league. There's a French league. There's an Italian league. There's a league in Greece. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's English. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh with the NFL, there really aren't those opportunities in Europe or Asia or Africa. So mm-hmm. I think they would have a tr- trouble finding players from there to compete because yeah. American football in America is massive. Like every kid plays it. Mm-hmm. They go to college for it. It's a whole ecosystem at this point. Um, so I don't know how successful international teams would be if they could only get players from outside the U S. Yeah. So that's why I think they have to literally be part of the, the NFL. Like there are basically four teams in the NFL. The only difference is they're located in Europe. I, th- yeah. I think that's how you would have to do it, I see. but it's an interesting topic. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it would be pretty good way of expanding the game. I just don't think you, you need it. I mean, the NFL is so big already that, like, yeah. but, you know, money and, and stuff like that comes into play. All right. Uh, story number four. So this is, uh, this is pretty simple, pretty interesting, I think. Um, it makes you think. So a video surfaced of a player by the name of Jeff Teague, who is a ex-NBA player. He's not in the league right now. Was with the Milwaukee Bucks when they won the 2021 uh, NBA championship, mm-hmm. and he said that he didn't even go to like an after party, and that the after after party sucked. Uh, that he just went home to hang out with his friends and like play video games and stuff like that. What uh, like what's your initial thought on this? <laughs> like, give me your initial response. Um, not gonna lie, I kind of feel bad for him. That's a little sad. And, okay, also I think I I have some uh, personal, personal experience. With my dance team, we went to Florida. We won three times when I was on there. And you're just stuck in Florida. It's not like your school is there rooting for you or you get to celebrate with the rest of the students. You're there by yourself. Yeah. Um, granted, it was so fun. That's not what I'm saying. But I kind of feel bad for him. Like, you may, you got this huge win, and you just go home after? I yeah. Don't know. I, so I have a follow-up question. Is it him, or is it because the team didn't have anything, or because his, his teammates didn't, didn't mm. do anything? See, I, I, can't, I can't get a read on if it was him saying, nah, I don't like to party. Like, I'm just going to yeah. go home and chill with my buddies. Or is it like the Milwaukee Bucks are just like, all right, we won, like, let's move yeah. on. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't, I don't really know. I couldn't, to I couldn't me, tell. To me, when I heard it, I thought it meant like the team, but I, I to be honest, I didn't really think about how it could just be like him yeah. <laughs> wanting to yeah. leave, but yeah. I, I wasn't too sure either. Uh, what do you think, what sport do you think parties the hardest? Um... I think maybe this is based off stuff we talked about, but I would think football. Like, remember, just because, like, the Super Bowl, that's the most watched event yeah. all year. Well, you had the parade. You had the parade. Exactly. You see guys drinking and, like, having fun. Even, uh, like, going back to, like, Jason Kelsey and Travis Kelsey yeah. out with Taylor Swift. Like, it was a whole thing. So, yeah. I would say football. Well, what would you say? I, I don't know. So when when hockey ends, when you see the Stanley Cup, yeah, 
Hey, you might want to look <laughs> yeah. at some videos. No, like, I know oh, what you're oh, talking about. <laughs> some of those hockey guys are nuts. They go, yeah. they're like, they love to party. Um, so I would say hockey's probably in the running. Baseball has to be the most anti-climatic. I mean, yeah, they like do the little locker room, you know, like they spray the champagne, the champagne and stuff. Yeah. yeah, but that's pretty much every sport. Um, and in college, I guess in college basketball, college football, you know, those kids oh. party. Oh, yeah. 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 So, um, I, yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I, I would say I would say football for sure and hockey have to be top two and then college. But other than that, I mean, yeah, the NBA doesn't seem like – they all seem like they just, you know, like go to clubs and like sit – Sit and like sit at a, boot, the table sit a and... booth, like with, with, <laughs> yeah. bottle, with bottle service. I don't know if, if that's partying or not. I, I guess uh, that's just that's all I see, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, but moving on to our uh, fifth and final story, and this came out because Dana, Mr. Dana White, made a statement, and supposedly UFC 306 is going to be hosted at in Las Vegas at the Sphere. Mm-hmm. Did you watch this video of him commenting or saying? That? I yeah, I saw the like interview. I think it's sick. I I just want to go. I don't care what I'm watching. I want to go to the Sphere. But having a like a sporting event there is is it's awesome. Yeah, I think. I think it's the only sporting event that you could have there. I don't think you could do anything else. Because the way it's set up it's is like, that all the stands are on one side. Yeah. That's like that's it's it's a concert venue. That's what it's mm-hmm. designed for. So I don't know what else you could have sports wise mm-hmm. at that venue. But I, I agree. I think it's I think it's an incredible idea. He said it's one and done. He said yeah. that they're going to do it once and it'll be over. He said it'll be the greatest, uh, you know, mixed martial arts event ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but my I, question is, when I saw this, the first thing I thought about, so the sphere, it's like this giant green screen, if you may. Mm-hmm. Screen, jumbotron, whatever. My question is, if they put, like, graphics on it, is that going to be, like, distracting for the fighters, yeah, and I had the same thought. Like, I think, I think around the ring, like when it really low, I mm-hmm. think you got to keep it just black or like, yeah, not even white. I would just keep it black. But uh-huh. then up above, you could probably broadcast it. I'm, I'm just curious what they're gonna put on the screen. I don't know no, because I... at concerts, it's like the visual effects, like yeah, with a boxing match, like. Is it just a video of themselves? I don't know. I'm just yeah. Well, I that's what they would play on the scoreboard, anyways. Uh, yeah. Is is the broadcast of it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It'll be interesting, and I'm excited to see it. Like you said, I yeah. want to go. I want to go, and whether it's to see a concert or something like yeah. this, <laughs> but I, it, it, it's it's an interesting food for thought. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very cool idea, and I hope it works out well, and they they make it so that they can, you know, continue to do it, mm-hmm. not just a one-and-done thing. All right, Delaney, your matchup of the week, your your game of the week, what do, you, what do you got for us? Okay, well, I wanted to add, I did watch some of the Timberwolves game, like you told me oh, to, I, but okay. I felt like I didn't watch enough, so I couldn't do my game of the week on it okay. because I didn't watch the whole thing. Well, did you, so real just, quick, did you watch Anthony Edwards? Did yeah, I saw him. Words? Yeah. He he's just like he I don't know, he seems a little goofy to me. <laughs> he is. He is like he's got a real bi- a bubbly personality, I guess. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. Okay, anyways, <laughs> your game of the week. Um, I decided to do the Angel game we went to. Yes. So the Angels versus the Royals. We we went and watched it in person. But the Angels lost ten to four. Yep, shocker. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I didn't realize how bad the Angels were. I thought they were kind of like middle of the pack. But, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. So <laughs> Yeah. What did, you, uh, what did you take away from the game? Well, you told me this, that 
Ashley Tisdale husband is on the Angels now. Not Ashley Tisdale, uh, Vanessa Hudgens. Oh, Vanessa Hudgens, yeah. Um, I had no idea of that, yeah. so that's really cool. Well, he might not um, be on the team for long because he stinks, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Cole, Cole Tucker Cole Tucker is married to Vanessa Hudgens, and I believe they're expecting their first kid here soon. Yeah, we talked um, about that. So I yeah. thought that was the coolest part. The rest of the game was kind of boring, not going to lie, because they were just losing so bad. Yeah, but... the Angels The Angels are they're down bad. Right now they're, they're racing for worst in the league. Is, oh, is where they're at. Lovely. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love to see it. Love to see it in Anaheim. So, uh, no, good good pick. Uh, we did go to the game, as you said. Uh, mm-hmm. The Royals the Royals are pretty good, and the Angels, like I said, are garbage. So, <laughs> it was tough to watch, but it's always good to be there. You know, you have a drink, you have a – you have a, we got some nachos, but, uh, yeah, it's always a good time. You had the, that ice cream. The, oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So baseball, baseball is just fun to be there. It's a fun atmosphere. Uh, we enjoy going all the different stadiums. Petco, well, you'll have to go to Petco down here in San Diego. It's, it's much better than Angel Stadium, that's for sure. All right, uh, we'll go sport by sport here, real quick. Um, the NBA and the NHL, I'm gonna just run through because there's not much to it other than where the playoffs are are at. So with the NBA, we are well into the second round now um but the celtics are the first team to move on they they defeated the cavaliers four to one the knicks mavericks and nuggets are all leading the series now um three to two there is game there are games tonight that obviously we're missing oh this is before they happen so in my opinion i think the nuggets right now are the best team and it's probably going to be the Nuggets and the Celtics going at it, if I had to guess. But uh, you never know. You never know. Maybe maybe a team sneaks in there like the Knicks or the, the Timberwolves, who, who seem to be okay. Um, the NHL. The NHL is very cool. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it till I die. Playoff hockey is so fun and so energetic. It is incredible to watch and and incredible to follow. So if you look at all four series, they're all going to game six. Uh, the Panthers are up on the Bruins. The Rangers are up on the Hurricanes. And the Stars are up on the Avalanche. The Canucks and the Oilers are right now tied 2-2. Two to two. Do they play tonight for game five? No sweeps. No five-game series. They're all going deep. The overtime thrillers are incredible. They are fighting. They're they're talking trash. They're hitting each other. Go watch playoff hockey. If if you don't know, if you're new to sports and you don't know anything about anything, go watch a <laughs> hockey game in the playoffs and you will enjoy it and you will fall in love with hockey because it is incredible. Every series is close. Every game is close. I'm going to say it again, playoff hockey is impressive, and it is mm-hmm. fun to watch. The Stanley Cup will come here sh- uh, quickly, and I'm, I I still like the Avalanche. They are losing 3-2 to two on the Stars. But, you know, it could be any of these teams because a couple, you know, lucky bounces and stuff, that's a game and that's a series. A series this close is incredible. All right, and then uh, last sport, obviously baseball. We have a couple things that happened this past week. Just basic news. Uh, Luis Guillermel was traded to our Angels. Not that it's going to help. Robbie Grossman was traded to the Rangers. And then uh, Paul Skeens, who is the number two uh, prospect, made his Major League debut uh, this past week. He only pitched four innings. He was unbelievable. He's He's known for dating... Star TikToker Livy Dunn. Did you know that? I don't know who that is. You don't know who Livy Dunn is? Maybe if I look her up. You'll probably recognize her. She's very, very famous on TikTok. Uh, she's a gymnast at LSU. Oh, I've seen her before. Yeah, so okay. she's dating Paul Skeens, who is a pitcher at LSU, and now he's playing mm-hmm. for the Pirates. Uh, he looked great. 
He's awesome. He throws like mm-hmm. 105 miles an hour. It's insane. Um, so he uh, that's that was kind of the big news of the week. And this happened yesterday. So Ronel Blanco was suspended for 10 games for using a, a foreign stu- substance. Now, Delaney, do you think this is a acceptable punishment for someone who's caught cheating during a game? Wait, how many games was it? Four? You it was said? ten. Ten games. Oh, ten. Um, yeah, I think so. Also, because I would say it would be less, but there's so many games in a baseball season. Me personally, yeah. I don't feel like ten is that much compared to the whole season. Yeah, but he was caught cheating. Literally, was caught. Oh. Mm, yeah. He was I using still think stuff. 10. He was using stuff on his glove to like mess with Make the ball. His- yeah, I don't know. I think 10's fine. I feel like that feels like yeah. a good amount. It's it's pretty crazy that people are still getting caught for this, considering they check all the time. They have cameras everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm pretty shocked that he would like he's willing to you know take that chance. Like, but does it really make that big of a difference? It does. It does because um, there's there's they can put pine tar, they can put Vaseline, they can put. Uh, they can cut the ball. Some players use like uh, used to use sandpaper and scuff the ball so that it it spins more. Jeez. There's all sorts. It's a whole science. I I don't know anything about it because I wasn't a pitcher. I was yeah. I was an infielder, so I didn't really care. But uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. So, mm. but ten can games, I? you think is okay? Yeah, I think ten. I don't know. That feels fine, especially but, because like you said, like these pitchers, they kind of all do it. So I feel like if it were to be longer, it would kind of be bad for the league in general. Yeah, but, but then then you're putting, you know, like, hey, don't do your it. Your foot down? That's yeah. a good point. I don't know. But I did want to ask, do you have any idea how our Jackson Holiday is doing? Yeah, he got sent down to the minors. <gasps> Are you serious? Yeah, so he went. He's, he started his career two for 36, I think it was. So okay. not very good. Um, so they sent him back down to the minors to, you know, work, work a little bit. He is, to give him credit, he is only 20 years old. Um, and there's some big name players that have started worse. So like someone like uh, Cal Ripken Jr., they mentioned, uh, had started way worse than Jackson Holiday did. Mm. Uh, okay. Even, even like some other players like Ken Griffey Jr. So it's not the end of the world. Sure, did we want him to, you know... <laughs> I wanted him to, like, it. ball out. <laughs> yeah, tear it up. But uh, that that's all right. He, okay. he'll, come ar- he'll come around. Like I said, he's only 20. So yeah. we'll see if they bring him back up here soon. But I'm not sure if they will. All right, uh, power rankings. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Delaney. Are you, are you, last week you did hits, correct? Yes. This all week right. I decided to do home runs. Ooh. Which I thought was kind of interesting because the couple... Like, the top five-ish, I feel like it's a pretty good. But then mm-hmm. it throws some teams in there, and I'm like, mm, okay. Well, I'm, I'm interested to hear this. So go ahead with number 10. So number 10, I have the Padres. Okay. Nine is the Angels, which I was shocked about. That's not right. <laughs> Eight is the Astros. Seven is Seattle. Six is Phillies. Five is Oakland. And Oakland. then these, yeah, are they really wow. bad? No, they're, they're well. Remember, we talked about them how they were supposed to be bad. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the yeah. I remember. Um, and then the top four, I feel pretty good about. Four, I have the Brewers. Three is the Yankees. Two is the Dodgers. And in first place is our Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. So okay. So there are. That's interesting because there are some teams in there that I also have. Uh, mm-hmm. quite a few of them, but obviously the Angels nowhere near. Yeah. Oakland, Oakland is okay. They're very middle of the pack. I'm surprised yeah. that they're that high on the home run list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Astros have been really bad too, so I'm pretty surprised that they're that high also. Yeah. Um. So for me, I have at ten. I have the Royals. We just talked. We talked about them earlier. They kicked our Angels' butts. <laughs> uh, they've been playing really well. They're very young, so I don't know if it's going to stay uh, at the same you know rate that they're playing. Uh, number nine, I have the Cubbies. The Cubs, the Cubs have been playing really well, and uh, they're very well rounded. They got some old guys, they got some young guys. 
Uh, they they pitch pretty well. So uh, I like the Cubbies at number nine. At number eight, I have the Brewers, similar to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do hit a lot of home runs. The Brewers, the only reason I'm a ha- I have them on this list, and I think they're going to fall, is because they've been playing good so far. I, I don't know how good the Brewers are going to be by the end of the year. They're kind of my pick as one of the teams to fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see where they go. Seven, I have the Mariners. I think the Mariners have the best starting pitching of any team. Uh, the relief pitching is a little hit and miss, and their offense is a little cold at times. But in my opinion, I think they have the best starting pitching. Number six, the Guardians. The Guardians have surprised some teams. They just play really good baseball, like very fun- fundamental baseball. Pitch, mm-hmm. we hit, we score. Like it's very, <laughs> very simple. Like they don't hit, a, they don't hit a lot of home runs. They don't give up a lot of runs. They are just very, you know, they're kind of boring to watch, but they're good. Uh, number five, I do have the Yankees. Um, the Yankees are, I hate the Yankees. Uh, they they hit a lot of home runs, and they they have those big name guys, you know, like Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, uh, Garrett Cole, those guys. Um, so they're expected to do well, kind of like the Dodgers. Um, number four, I have the Braves. The Braves are always going to be there. They're legit. They are dealing with some injuries, but uh, the Braves are are a really good baseball team and will be in the playoffs. Three, I do have our Orioles. Uh, they do hit a lot of home runs. They had a walk-off home run yesterday. Mr. Adley Rutschman, that was pretty cool. Um, at number two, I have the Phillies. The Phillies can rake. They they can hit, okay? They have a couple of really good pitchers. The bullpen is okay, but their offense from top to bottom is incredible. Probably, arguably the best in the league, maybe behind the Dodgers. Who is my number one team? The Dodgers. Uh, It pisses me off that the Dodgers are doing well because they spent a ton of money, which is no fun. But, uh, yeah, they're so good. And Shohei Otani is hands down, without a doubt, the best player to ever live. And we are so grateful to get to watch him Mm -hmm. both now as a Dodger just destroying people but also as an angel to see him coming up, which was yeah. pretty cool. I got to say, so Shohei Tani, by far the best player ever I've seen. Um, and the Dodgers are the number one team on our power rankings. All right, let's wrap this up. And as always, our final question of the week, similar to a, one of our stories, what is the ultimate venue and what sport where uh, it could be, you could make it up. You could, mm-hmm. you could, uh, get creative with it but what what is the ultimate venue for a sporting event so for me i no offense but i try to think of the most boring sport i could think of and try to spice it up so i said golf and my idea was you make these giant platforms and you put them in the middle of the ocean and golfers have to golf on these platforms. But the fun part is, because it's in the ocean, the ball, like, ah. <laughs> will keep on moving. So maybe you'll get lucky and it will, like, help you out a little bit. It'll go, yeah, it'll either yeah. go close to the pin or uh, far mm-hmm. away. But I thought the the waves and the rocking motion would make it more interesting. Yeah. Well, have you, okay, so that that is that that is a good idea. I like it. Very mm-hmm. creative. So there have... I was trying to think of some some different ways you could, you know, broadcast or do a sporting event. So I've seen videos of obviously there's been college basketball games on aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm. Um, There's been I saw a practice field for the NFL on the beach. I think one of the coolest venues and I think it has to be basketball because basketball is uh it's a small, the court's relatively smaller compared mm-hmm. to most, uh, most, what do you call it? Freaking sporting events. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fields, arenas, mm-hmm. courts. So I went with basketball in like a very remote jungle, just <laughs> surrounded by like trees okay. and like, like with animals and stuff coming in, <laughs> and, but it's broadcasted so you could see it. 
like uh-huh. there's no fans so it's really quiet it's like uh-huh. like i think that'd be pretty cool you would hear like the squeaking of the shoes 24 7 yeah exactly <laughs> or like the roars of like a tiger or something <laughs> um so i had that idea or like you said the ocean or a lake has to be mm-hmm. like a possibility so you could you could do all sorts of sports there like whether it's football baseball you just have to have a big enough platform or boat yeah um like a cruise ship like with the oh that would in. be sick that, that'd be that's pretty a cool. great idea um one of the cool things i've been seeing and they've been doing it for about 10 years now maybe a little longer is the uh the hockey games outside mm-hmm. where they've been playing them in like baseball stadiums or football stadiums that's yeah. i think that's pretty cool I know um, University of Wisconsin does that on Mm -hmm. their, like, lake right outside of their campus, which is sick. Yeah. Well, they did, they did, like, women's basketball. Iowa did women's basketball in the football stadium, and Wisconsin did uh, women's volleyball Volleyball. in the football stadium. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have some cool venues, but made-up venue has to be, like, outer space. Like, if you could, if you could, like, on the moon. Oh, so cool, but in like a, but like in a dome, so like there's still gravity. Oh, oh see, God. I think you don't have gravity. Imagine Zero gravity? like, Im- yeah, imagine like basketball or something, like trying to like bounce the ball, and you can't. Yeah. You can wait. What's it called? You can't travel. So it's oh, like no traveling. Yeah. So you just like you jump from like half court and you like just yeah. dunk it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. That would be pretty cool. I think I think it's too unrealistic though. Like, have you ever yeah. seen the movie Space Jam? <laughs> yeah. Like in the cartoon, like the, yeah, yeah, Space Jam, or uh, yeah, that I I think the most made up has to be something with space, like on a rocket. Yeah, that would be sick. So, mm-hmm. all right. Well, that concludes our episode of Bronco and the Pig. Uh, we are so glad that you joined us to talk about sports. As always, I'm the pig with my co-host, the Bronco. Go watch sports, go love sports, and then come back next week, next Friday, to come talk about sports with your, your favorites, the Bronco and the pig. Peace.